time for a quick market update. There's lots of word on the street about the real estate market, so I thought I would just really give you for some first-hand knowledge on what is happening in the Metro Phoenix area. So first up, um, a lot of the headlines around the country are talking about foreclosures being up. So, you know, here's, here's a couple of headlines here that I have. You know, it's unfortunate when we look at this. So I just want to really set the record straight as to what is happening in the Phoenix market. So yes, foreclosures are up. They're up from January. Um, there was kind of was a little bit of a high point there in the middle of February, and then it's dropped since March, and that's foreclosures pending. So in Arizona, that means you get a notice of a trustee's sale. You have 90 days to try and figure out what you're gonna do with your mortgage, if you're gonna get someone to pay it so it can become current, or if you're gonna sell your property. And in Arizona, we're fortunate that a lot of people have a ton of equity in their homes. So very different from last time, they might just have the option of selling it. But let's really look more deeply at these numbers to really understand what it means when you see that foreclosures have doubled or they're up 100%. Let's really dive deep and see what happens. So here, yes, foreclosures are pending. Do we have more than last year? For sure we do. But remember that we had the American Rescue Plan Act, which gave $9.9 .9 billion in mortgage payment assistance back in March of 2021. And we had forbearance provided by lenders, meaning they would delay some of your mortgage payments to help people. They weren't erasing mortgage payments, but they're adding them to the end of your mortgage. So those mortgage bankers had the opportunity to kind of renegotiate terms with some of their clients to avoid going into foreclosure. And um, that, you know, and also we had the moratorium. There were no foreclosures allowed, and that was extended until July of 2021. So we had all these people who, in forbearance, who had renegotiated and made deals with their mortgage lenders, so they're removed from any of the foreclosure potential at that time. And on top of that, no foreclosures were allowed. So, of course, we're going to see that tick up when there's no foreclosures allowed, and then all of a sudden the faucet turns back on and we are allowing foreclosures to happen. Well, yeah, it's highly likely that the number's going to go up from zero. So, kind of that's where we are as far as that goes. If we look here at our overall picture across all the years going back, I only went back to 2008 because that's when we saw quite a significant amount. Um, that in our most recent past, you can see where we are today, 2023, kind of that um, duller pink down towards the bottom. Um, I went back to 2008 and we're the third lowest in the amount of foreclosures pending. And keep in mind the two years that are underneath that are 2022 and 2021. When we had government backed programs, we had no foreclosures allowed and we had mortgage lenders willing to work with their people on payments. So it's a very low number. Look back at 2010, the one at the top of the chart, when we saw we had almost 50,000 foreclosures pending. Now, foreclosure pending is different than an actual foreclosure. Foreclosure pending, like I said, is notice of a trustee sale. That is the first time any notice is given and you have those 90 days to clear it up. So this is foreclosures pending. We don't even know if those are actually gonna turn into sales at the courtroom steps. Someone may swoop in, grab that property before and pay off the balance of the mortgage. Here's foreclosures per month as well as the actual trustees sales. So the red line is notice, hey, you haven't paid your bill, you got 90 days to clean it up. And purple is the line of the actual how homes that make it to this trustees sale. You'll notice I put in this, this blue arrow over here, the moratorium. And you can see we did have that slight uptick. Those are probably people who just hadn't paid their mortgage or weren't agreeing to the term, weren't completing the terms of the forbearance. So of course it ticked up. And we can see it settled down for a little bit and we just see a light, light pickup. But look at that as compared to 2008, 9, 10. It's nothing. So when you say it's doubled, I think people just get this horrendous thought in their mind that we're going down this path again. No, look how low those numbers are. We're below pre-pandemic numbers. 
The bottom line is that there will be an increase in foreclosures over the next year from record low levels, but there will not be a huge wave of distressed sales as happened following the housing bubble. The distressed sales during the housing bust led to cascading price declines and that will not happen this time. So there is not this inventory of these mystery houses that where no one has paid their bill that are going to all of a sudden flood the market. So there's no fear there. And we could actually, you'll see later on, we could actually use some additional homes out there for people to purchase. 18 months after the end of the government's foreclosure moratorium, with less than 5% of the 8.4 million borrowers who entered the CARES Act forbearance program remaining. So just keep that in mind. We had 8.4 million people volunteer to talk to their mortgage lender to work out some sort of terms. Only 5% of those people are left with dealing with those terms. Foreclosure activity remains significantly lower than it was prior to COVID-19 pandemic. It seems clear that government and mortgage industry efforts during the pandemic coupled with a strong economy have helped prevent millions of unnecessary foreclosures. Now the economy thing, we need to do take that with a grain of salt. A lot larger level things could go on. We could head into a recession, we could go to war. There's several things that could happen that might change the situation a little bit. But as far as us being, you know, uh, foreclosures up 150%, yes, that's accurate, but up from zero. So let's really keep that in mind. Also is something that, um, we dealt with last time when we had the slew of foreclosures happen. We were building homes like crazy. You can see those green number, the green bars there. That was a record setting number of homes being built with not enough buyers. It was purely based on the demand, this false demand for people who could get mortgages without applying for them. People were owning three and four homes in the same city purely riding that speculation speculation wave that they would have increased appreciation. Well, when l rates change and you have an adjustable rate mortgage and you can no longer afford that mortgage and you own four homes, you're going to have to let one go. And when one neighborhood has one property after another in that same situation, yes, it's going to have downward pressure on prices. But right now, we're only seeing a sprinkling here and there. And since then, we have not built near the number of homes. We are, for 14 years, we've built below the 52 year average. And as of 2023, 20, we have not seen the building permits that we were seeing in 2022. 2022, we averaged about 2,200 permits a month. In February, there were only 1,300 single family permits issued. So it's not like there is this glut of homes, new homes hitting the market that don't have buyers for them. The builders are very cautious. They got burned last time and they're not going to be left in the same situation. They would rather the demand for their product be sky high than put themselves out there to have all these homes just sit with no buyers. Maricopa County's growth is also back on track after the pandemic. I don't know if you remember, there was a time when it was a quote of 250 people moving here per day or whatever. Um, as of 2022, we are the Maricopa County is the largest growing county in the nation, adding 56,000 new residents in 2022 over, you know, an increase from 2021. So pretty significant that we're the largest growing county in the country. That also boards, bodes well for our housing situation and holding prices stable. Okay, so let's get into the current market, active listings. Active listings are declining. Yes, we saw a glut of inventory hit last fall. Um, that's been pretty much gobbled up. Yes, we do have more listings than we had in 2020 and in 2021 and in 2022, but look at the direction of that pink line. It's going down. So we are not seeing the amount of listings that we should have about this time. And you go, well, that's higher than the last few years. The last few years were phenomenally low. Um, you can see here, there was the hump we saw in October-ish 
of the active listings, and since then it has just been climbing with declining with no new homes hitting, very few homes hitting the market. This I want to just illustrate here as to how low the inventory is actually out there. Yes, it did tick up, but it didn't tick up very high. We are at the fourth lowest year since 2005 as far as active listing goes. Back in 2008, we had 56 thousand homes for sale again and in 2010 is when we saw that height of foreclosures so um nothing for sale as compared to then really really not in the same situation so back in 2008 2009 2010 you can see those numbers were astronomical we saw a huge amount of foreclosures at that time that's a lot of competition for a home that's for sale when there's four on the street that are for sale. When you have 56,000 listings available and builders keep building more, the downward pressure on prices is going to be quite phenomenal. But when you only have 13,000 single family homes to buy in a huge metro area, it's going to hold prices pretty stable despite interest rates and also new people coming to town. Listings under contract has just been kind of bouncing around. We can see sometimes an uptick when rates have held stable for a little while, but with rates right now bouncing around, it's very hard for people to make purchasing decisions because they don't know what they're shopping for. And that half percent swing can mean a lot, a, a difference in a payment for a lot of people. So um, that's what we're seeing, you know, fewer listings going under contract. We're also seeing some sellers who are potential buyers, but don't want to sell at this high interest rate environment and not gain that much more in-house. It's really not worth it for them to sell. They just rather stay at their 3.5% mortgage rather than trade up to a 7% and not get that much more house. Listings under contract, you can see where that pink thing, I know it gets a little confusing over there with all the text over it, but second from the bottom as far as listings under contract since 2005. So we're the fourth lowest as far as active listings and we're the second lowest as far as listings under contract. So what's happening is just not a lot of activity going on. There are buyers, there are sellers, and prices are holding pretty steady, but we're just not seeing a lot of activity. We were operating at a level up here, now we're kind of operating in a level down here. Listing success, you have a better chance of selling your house right now than you did in the fall. In the fall, we got as low as 62%. Now we've jumped back up to 79%. So um, pretty nice number to have for a listing success rate of you know, the odds of your home selling. Ignore that low 22, that's just April. That's just because this is so early in the month. Not a lot of stuff is closed yet. Seller concessions are slowing, which indicates that sellers are gaining some strength. So we can see we hit the height of seller concessions right there in January um, when things were pretty slow. The holiday time was very slow. So this is closed transactions. So that means they probably went under um, contract in November or December before they closed in January. And we can see that 49% um, in March closed with seller concessions it will down from the previous months recent months and the average concession we're seeing is about ninety three hundred dollars so that can mean seller helping with closing costs it could be seller buying the rate down it could be seller giving a credit for something maybe repairs or something like that so seller concessions are highly likely about half of the transactions are closing with seller concessions, but it's moving in the opposite direction. You can see um, in, in July 2021 to about July 2022 when um, concessions were rather low. Where concessions happen for the most part is in those middle price ranges, um, mainly under that $500,000 price point is where we're seeing the most concessions take place. But look at that, even over $3 million, we're seeing people ask for some sort of concessions, which is kind of interesting. It's not always just um, the mid-rise or the people, the first-time buyer type market. So sales year to date, yeah, we're falling behind um, the last two years. We're just not seeing as many transactions as I was saying. Um, but March did pick up some steam, but you can see we're not nearly as strong as we were in um, 
quarter one of 22 or quarter two of 20 or quarter one of 21 we have fewer transactions but definitely better than we saw in February median sales price of all sales that happened in Phoenix uh, so between 15,000 was the lowest sale up to 7,995 in December of 22 we can see that the median price was 415 now that has held pretty steady January 415 median sales price February 415 it's kind of crazy to see it hold steady for December January February not decline hold steady and what happened in March we saw it tick up by five thousand dollars so prices they're saying are back on the rebound that we've come out of this kind of uh, lull and we're seeing more people willing to get out there and, and make a transaction happen. Now the three month moving average, I like to use this right now. Sure, there are longer term averages which are gonna give you a smoother line. The thing is things are really changing in our market and you need to know when it has turned around so you can uh, not only price properties accurately, but when you're negotiating contracts to really understand is the market swinging up is it swinging down? What is happening? And this can be very different for specific neighborhoods. So I encourage you to really drill down for your neighborhood and price range to determine what is happening where you are. So we can see the last two months have been pretty good. Um, we've had, we're up at 277 per square foot um, for the average sales price. And you can see that is um, probably about where a little bit higher than January of 2022, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, we might have gained some last year and lost some, but overall we're starting to see that upward um, slope as far as pricing goes, which is awesome. A mortgage rates decrease for the third consecutive week. Now I don't know what's going to happen this week. We'll see, but economic uncertainty continues to bring mortgage rates down. That favors the mortgage market. People flock to real estate to be more stable to take their cash out of things like the stock market so over the last several weeks rates have brought borrowers back to the market but as a spring home buying season gets underway low inventory remains a key challenge for prospective buyers so like I mentioned we had the fourth lowest year of active listings available for people to buy out there so here's just rates over the last year and you can see how um, the 15 year rate was down below four the 30 year rate was about mid fours and now we're at 6.32 and 5.56 so a little bit different than it was before but we don't have the seven in front of it which is psychologically helping i think a little bit so hillary Gurley with Restline and sotheby's International Realty, please reach out if you would like me to run any of these numbers for your specific neighborhood or give you an overview of what is happening where you live. Thanks so much.